Okay, hello everyone in a new video. So we have reached part 3 of chapter 2, which is the chapter of electric voltage for grade 10 students. Then now we have reached section number 6. And the title of the section is the voltmeter. Then on the right we have the voltmeter. What's the voltmeter? First let me give the symbol of the voltmeter. Then the symbol of the voltmeter is given by V. V stands for the voltmeter. And the voltmeter has two terminals. One of them is distinguished by the name COM. As we shall see the usage of the COM. Okay? So the voltmeter is an apparatus which measures the voltage across two points of an electric circuit. So from its name, volt, meter, so anything that ends with the word meter means it is an instrument or an apparatus. Apparatus means an instrument. So what does this instrument measure? It measures the volt, which is the voltmeter, okay? Now, now idea number three, because here we are using the voltmeter to measure the voltage, then we must connect the voltmeter in parallel because according to law of uniqueness of voltages, whenever two components are connected in parallel, they have the same voltage. Then the voltmeter has two terminals. and it must be connected in parallel. Now, idea number four, the reading of the voltmeter depends on the comb terminal. We know that if the comb terminal is connected to the negative pole, then the voltmeter will indicate a, a positive reading. Then let's say that if the comb terminal is connected to the negative pole then the voltmeter will indicate positive reading And vice versa, now idea number 5, if the comp term is connected to the positive pole, then the voltmeter will indicate negative, uh, positive, negative reading, okay? So they are the opposite. Now if the comp terminal is connected to the positive pole, Then the voltmeter will indicate negative reading. And as, so the voltmeter measures the voltage U, and as we have seen in this chapter, that it is important to distinguish between the voltages UAB and UBA. 
And here, the reading of the voltmeter, whether it measures UAB or UBA, also depends on the comp term. And recall that the comp term is always is related to the second letter. So if this first term is connected to A and the other term is connected to B, the comp term is connected to B and the other term is connected to A, then the voltmeter will measure UAB. So let me write idea number six. If the comp terminal is connected to B, and the other terminal is connected to A, Then the voltmeter measures the voltage U, so it will either measure UAB or UBA is connected to A. So the two terminals are labeled by A and B, but since the COM terminal is connected to B, so the first point will be A and the second will be B. Okay, so recall that always the second point is for the COM terminal. Now, idea number seven, which is new, there are two types of voltmeters, or there is two types of voltmeter. So the first one is given by the dig digital voltmeter. So for example, the voltmeter shown in this document is set to be a digital voltmeter. The digital voltmeter measures the voltage by displaying a numerical value. While the analog voltmeter measures voltage by displaying, sorry, by the deviation of the needle. So the digital voltmeter is a trivial. Now what is interesting is the analog voltmeter. So we are saying here that it measures uh, the voltage by the deviation of the needle. Now the next section, which is section number seven, let's discuss the analog voltmeter. How do we use the analog voltmeter? So section number seven using an analog voltmeter. So here in this document we can see the analog of the voltmeter. So here on this axis, which is a circular axis, we have numbers and this is the needle. So also this voltmeter has two terminals. One of the terminals is labeled by the comb. So if this terminal is connected to A and this terminal is connected to B, or say for example CD, then the voltmeter will measure from the terminal, from the first terminal to the comp terminal, so it will measure UCD. Okay? So all the all other properties, all properties hold for both uh, digital and analog voltmeter. But now let me here specify that the formula or the relation that is used in order to 
measured uh, to to read the voltage measured by the voltmeter. So let let me say the voltage. I measured by the my measured. by the analog voltmeter is given by u is equal to s multiplied by small d divided by big D and let me, let me specify what does each quantity represent so let me write word u is the voltage measured by the analog voltmeter and the assignment of the voltage we know that it is V its symbol is given by V which stands for volts now what does S represent? S is given by the scale, small s is the scale or range and the S unit of the scale or the range is given by volts also now D, small d represents the deviation of the needle And the assignment of the deviation is given by divisions and its symbol is given by div. Now capital D is the deal or total number of divisions and it's expressed in div which stands for divisions now how do we use this formula this formula consists of four variable variables whenever we know three of them four quantities whenever we know three of them we can determine the other suppose here okay so in grade 10 no need to construct triangle for any formula we will use mathematical operations in order to determine the unknown. Suppose that we are interested in determining the deviation of the needle, which is a small d. Then we need to put d on one side and all the other numbers on the other side. So u is already on the other side. Now capital D is being divided by small d. So moving it to the right hand to the other side, it will be multiplied. Now as here is multiplied, moving it to the other side, it will be divided. So small d will be given by capital T times u divided by s. Now suppose that you are interested in determining s. Then s will be give, will will be equal to capital U. Moving capital T to the to the to the other side, it will be multiplied. Moving small d to the right to the other side, it will be divided. And so on and so forth. Now suppose that you are interested in determining, for example, capital D. So moving it to the other side, it will be at the top. Moving u to the other side, it will be at the bottom. And here we have s multiplied by d. Okay. And here let me specify an important note, which is given by uh, or related to the most convenient scale. So what is the most convenient scale? Uh, for an analog voltmeter, so it is the one, is the one having a scale, a scale as slightly greater than the value. 
to be measured. And let's consider the following exercise as a direct application on what we have explained. Now in exercise number 7 they are telling me an, an, an analog voltmeter has a DLD is equal to 100 divisions. In number 1 they are telling me calculate the DC voltage U measured by the voltmeter so we are interested in determining U. So here we are dealing with analog voltmeter. Knowing that the needle deviates D is equal to 60 divisions under a scale of S is equal to 10 volts. Okay, So we are interested in determining you knowing that when we set the scale to be 10 volts the needle deviates into 60 divisions. So the formula that relates U capital D small d and S is given by that U is equal to S multiplied by D divided by D. Okay, knowing that we are interested in determining the value of u, then the value of s is given by 10 and s, either value is d of d is given by 60. Uh, the value of capital D, which stands for the DALE or the total number of divisions, is given by 100. Plugging this fraction on the calculator, so it's given by 600 divided by 100, so it's equal to 6 volts. Then the voltage u measured by this analog voltmeter is given by 6 volts. Now in number 2 they are telling me the cursor of the voltmeter is adjusted at S is equal to 5 volts. So now S is equal to 5 volts. So the moment that we change the scale, okay, so first let me say the following. The total number of the divisions or the DALE of the voltmeter that we are using doesn't change. So what will change is, uh, what will happen is that if we will change S, the small d will change, okay. The voltage U depends on the electric circuit and doesn't depend on the voltmeter. So all of these quantities, capital D, small d, small s, depends on, the, depends on the voltmeter itself. D is always fixed. Small d and small s are related together. Whenever d changes, the other changes, okay? So now because s is being set to 5 volts, we expect that the small d will change. In the DC mode, okay, calculate the deviation d of the needle. We are interested in determining the value of d. If now the voltage that we are measuring is being 4 volts. So previously the voltage that we were measuring is 6 volt. Now the voltage that we are measuring is U is equal to 4 volts. So knowing that S is equal to 5 volts, U is equal to 4 volts, and D is being fixed to 100 divisions, we are interested in determining the value of D. So what is the formula that relates S, small d, U, and capital D? It's given by that U is equal to S multiplied by D divided by capital D. Knowing that we are interested in the value of D. So then in this case, D is given by, dragging this to the other side, it will be U multiplied by capital D, dragging S to the, to the other side, since we are interested in determining D. So it is required from us to put D on one side and the, all the other quantities on the other side. So here it is multiplied, dragging it to the other side, it will be divided. Now the value of capital U is given by 4 or U. The value of capital D didn't change, it's given by 100 and the value of the scale in this case is given by 5. So it's given by 400 divided by 5. Now plugging this on the calculator, then the value of small d is given by, I think, 80. Let me check. Calculator. So it is given by 80, okay? That's the calculator. One second. Okay. So what's the S unit of D is divisions. Then in this case the deviation of the needle is given by D is equal to 80 divisions. So this is it for exercise number 7. Now we move to the next section which is the oscilloscope. So section number 8, the oscilloscope.
Then on the right we have the following document. This document represents the oscilloscope. Let's give the symbol of the oscilloscope, which is represented by two terminals. So this is the symbol of the oscilloscope. This is the first terminal and this is the second. So notice that this terminal is the same as for the reference potential. Now idea number two, what does the oscilloscope represent? The oscilloscope is an apparatus which measures the voltage by visualizing it with respect to time. So now we have seen three different in instruments that are used to measure the voltage. The first one is the dig digital voltmeter, the second is the analog voltmeter, and the third is the oscilloscope. Now the oscilloscope plays an important role whenever we need to study the properties of the AC voltage. We can extract the maximum voltage, the effective voltage, the frequency, and the period. Okay, so although here in this case we are restricting our discussion to DC voltage source, so both of them can measure DC voltage source, so, but the oscilloscope plays an important role when it comes to AC voltage. Now, idea number three, let me say that the oscilloscope has two terminals. that are given by sorry, uh, has two terminals and it must be connected in parallel So why it must be connected in parallel? Because according to law of uniqueness of voltages, they have the same voltage, and we are interested in determining the voltage or measuring the voltage. Now idea number four, the two terminals of the oscilloscope are given by So the first one is the phase terminal or this is also known as the channel input channel and its symbol is given by this so the first terminal this is known as the phase terminal or the input channel and the second one is given by the mass terminal or the ground terminal and this is given by the same as the reference potential now because we are, we are measuring voltage we are always interested in determining whether the instrument is measuring UAB and UBA or UBA and this depends on the connections of the phase and the mass so let me say that idea number five if the phase terminal is connected to A and the mass terminal is connected to B
then the oscilloscope measures UAB so what is the oscilloscope measures from the face to the mass so if this point is connected to A and this point is connected to B then the oscilloscope measures UAB now how do we read the voltage measured by the, volt by the oscilloscope let me say that the measurement of the oscilloscope the measurement of the voltage using the oscilloscope is done using the following formula which is given by u is equal to sv multiplied by y So what does each quantity represent and its assign unit? Let me say where U represents the voltage measured by the oscilloscope And we know it's assign is given by volts and its symbol is capital V. Now as for SV is the vertical sensitivity. It's given by volts per division. Its symbol is V per div and stands for volts per division. And finally, y is the number of divisions of the displacement of the luminous line. and it's given by div which stands for divisions and let me say that idea number seven now we are ready to discuss the screen of the oscilloscope so here by referring to this instrument which is the oscilloscope as we can see that this is the screen of the oscilloscope this axis is labeled by time and this axis is labeled by voltage we always know that axes in physics are labeled by physical quantities now referring to the screen of the oscilloscope so whenever we connect the oscilloscope across two points in an electric circuit we expect that the luminous line will, display, will be displaced either upward or, down, or downward so this is the luminous line now in this case it, it is displaced upward now we can use the formula that u is equal to sv multiplied by y in order to measure the voltage uh, indicated by the, vo uh, by the oscilloscope so sv, for, uh, sv is always given for example let's consider it in this case to be 1 volts per division now we, count, we can count the number of divisions displaced by the luminous line so each division is given by 1 so this is 2 and recall that each subdivision represents 0.2y now so this is 1.2 1.4 1.6 1 1.8 in order to reach 2 okay so in this case this is 2.2 and this is 2.4 so the, the luminous line is the space 2.4 divisions upward so this is equal to 1 because the luminous line is displaced upward so y is positive and multiplied by okay 2.4 so the, the oscilloscope measures 2.4 volts divisions in this case 
and let me hear from this go to the fact that idea number eight to say that if the luminous line because these axes are oriented axes if the luminous line is displaced upward so it's positive if the luminous line is displaced downward so it is negative i'm talking about the value of y which will affect the sign of u so if the luminous line is displaced upward then the oscilloscope measures positive value which means that u is positive now what about if the luminous line is displaced downward so it's exactly the opposite then the oscilloscope measures negative value which means that u is negative and finally the final idea in the oscilloscope that before using an oscilloscope The luminous line, you need to make sure that the luminous line is adjusted at the center of the screen. The luminous line must be adjusted at the center of the screen. In order for the measurement, to be correct so these are the main ideas that we need to consider when talking about the oscilloscope and let's solve the following exercises as a direct application then exercise number eight they are telling me each of documents one and two shows the screen of the oscilloscope calculate for each the voltage measured by the oscilloscope taking into account the given scale so let's start by document one then first always in physics we need to write the formula that we are using which is given by u is equal to sv multiplied by y notice that for document 1 the scale is given by 3 and notice that in this case the luminous line is displaced upward so it's positive what about the number of divisions so this is 1 2 this is 2.2 and this is 2.4 then the luminous line is displaced 2.4 divisions upward and let me calculate this then it's given by 7.2 since both SV and Y are expressed in the SI so the value of U will be in the SI which is volts then U measured by the first document is given by 7.2 volts now as for document 2 we have that U is equal to SV multiplied by Y now the value of SV indicated here is given by 5 so notice that u y is displaced downward so it's negative because the luminous line is displaced downward what about the number of divisions here we have one two three so it's given by minus three plugging this on the calculator is given by minus 15 since both sv and y are expressed in the si so the value of u will be in the si which is volts then u is equal to minus 15 volts and now exercise number nine they are telling me six electric loads are connected to a 24 volts battery as shown in the adjacent document 
So as usual, the trick in solving such type of exercises is to label the voltage on the electric circuit itself, but not only the value, but with the name and with the correct labels. Then in this case, 24 is positive, which means that we are measuring from P to N. So UPN is equal to 24 volts. They are telling me that UPA is equal to 8 volts. And UND is equal to minus 4 volts. Let me make it clear that this is minus 4. And UAC is equal to 6 volts. So let me write here that UAC is equal to 6 volts. So UAC represents the voltage between the points A and C. Although we don't have any electric components between A and C, but this doesn't mean that we cannot measure a voltage. Now, in number 1, they are telling me to calculate the electric potential difference UDN. So here, because we have U and D is equal to minus 4 volts, no need to apply any law. Simply U D N is equal to minus U and D. So minus multiplied by minus, which gives us 4 volts. Then in this case, U D N is equal to 4 volts. And let me change this label to be U D N is equal to 4 volts. Now, a number, uh, sorry, in the same part, they are telling me to calculate the voltage UAD, and this can be applied using the law of addition of voltage. We are interested in determining UAD. Then let's say apply law of addition of voltages. Then how do you apply this law? Always on the left, we write the voltage that we are interested in, which is UAD. And on the other side of this equation, we'll go from A to D across different electric components such that we know their voltages. Then from A, we can go to P. From P, we can go to N. From N, we can go to D. So, notice that this is a valid equation since we have started with A on both sides, ended with D on both sides, and we have inserted each letter twice. So, in this case, UPA is equal to 8 volts, then UAP is given by minus 8, UPN is 24, and UND, UDN is 4, so UND is minus 4. Now, plugging this on the calculator, then the value of UAD is given by 12 volts. So UAD is equal to 12 volts. So let me write here that UAD is equal to 12 volts. Now we are interested in determining UCD, then apply law of addition of voltages. Then always on the left we write the voltage that you are interested in, which is UCD. Then we need to go from C to D across different electric components such that we know their voltages. Then we are interested in determining UCD. From C we can go to A because we know UAC. And from A we can go back, back directly to D. No need to go to P, P to N, and back to D. So we can directly go from A to D choosing the closest path. So from C to A, and A back to D. Now, if UAC is equal to minus 6, then you say is given by, uh, sorry, UAC is equal to 6, then you say is given by minus 6, and UAD is given by 12, so this is given by 6. Since both of these are expressed in volts, so the value of UCD will be in volts. So UCD is equal to 6 volts. Okay, so this is it for part one. Now in number two, they are telling me C is taken as an electric potential reference as indicated here on the figure. Now we are interested in determining, okay, calculate the electric potentials VC, VA, and VP. 
So let's start by order in determining Vc and let me say electric potential at C. So notice that here C because it's taken as the electric potential reference. Let me say since C is taken as an electric potential reference. then Vc is equal to 0. So here we have Vc is equal to 0. So we are done with Vc. Now we are interested in determining the electric potential at A. So in order to determine the electric potential at A, we need to determine a voltage U. We need to know a voltage U such that one of these points is A, is A related to another point in which we know the electric potential at the other point. So we know the potential at the point C and we know the voltage UAC. So we can say that UAC is equal to 6 volts, knowing that we are interested in determining VA, the potential at the, at the point A, which exists here because UAC is given by VA minus VC which is equal to 6 we are interested in determining the value of VA and the value of VC we know which is given by 0 so what's the type of this equation this is a linear equation and one unknown the unknown is VA so VA minus 0 is equal to 6 so the electric potential at the point A is given by 6 volt so we are done with VA now we are interested in determining the electric potential at P so in order to determine the electric potential at the point B at the point P we need to know a voltage U that relate this point which is the point P into another point in which we know the electric potential at the other point so eventually we have calculated VA to be 6 so if we consider UPA we know the value of UPA which is given by 8 volts so here let me also write that the potential at the point P is given by 6 volts then if you consider UPA to be 8 volts now we are interested in determining the electric potential at the point P so VP is encoded in this equation which is given by VP minus VA is equal to 8 we are interested in determining the value of VP we know the value of VA so this is A sorry so what's the type of this equation this is a linear equation and unknown the unknown is VP so VP minus 6 is equal to 8 how do we solve it we drag 6 to the other side and VP is equal to, to 8 plus 6 which is equal to 14 since both of these are expressed in volts so the value of VP will be expressed in volts so for example we, have, we could have considered UPN which is equal to 24 volts and let's say that v UPN is VP minus VN which is equal to 24 we could have used this equation in, to, in order to determine the VP but the problem is that we don't know the potential at the point M for this reason first we have taken C as a reference electric potential calculated the potential at the point A then from A calculated the potential at the point B at the point P okay so this is it for number uh, 2 Now in number 3 they are telling me an oscilloscope is connected across the, ter the two terminals B and C we observe on the screen a luminous line displaced by Y is equal to 3 divisions so notice that here the oscilloscope is connected across the two terminals B and C so the oscilloscope will, e will either measure UBC or UCB so notice that this is not the phase terminal sorry this is not the mass terminal of the oscilloscope this represents 
the electric potential reference okay so in this case they are telling me given that the vertical sensitivity is given by one volts per division and the oscilloscope is measuring UBC now in 3.1 show on the figure the connections of the oscilloscope so in order to show the, on the figure the connections of the oscilloscope first we need to know if the oscilloscope measures UBC or UCB notice that here they are telling us that the luminous line is displaced upward so let's say since the luminous line is displaced upward then the oscilloscope measures a positive value and knowing that it is given that UBC is positive so because the luminous line is displaced upward which means that the oscilloscope is measuring a positive value and we know that UBC is positive so in this case the oscilloscope then the oscilloscope measures UBC because we know that UBC is positive now after we have known or determined that the oscilloscope measures UBC now we can uh, figure out the connections of the oscilloscope and let's say since the oscilloscope measures UBC so because the oscilloscope measures UBC then the phase term is connected to B and the mass term is connected to C then the phase terminal is connected to B and the mass terminal is connected to C. So this is the phase terminal and let's consider that the mass terminal is the same as the electric potential reference or we can we, okay we could label it also like this okay now in part 3.2 they are telling me to calculate UBC so here okay we have two methods here to calculate UBC either by law of addition of voltages or using the indication of the oscilloscope if we need to, to use it using, using the law of addition of voltages notice that if we need to go from B to C we need first to go through the point A but we don't know UBA we can go from B to P but also we don't know UBP we can go from B to D but we don't know UBD we can go from P to N we don't know UBN so you can try out all the possible uh, points and you can see that you cannot determine UBD using a uh, UBC using the law of addition of voltages for this reason we have used the oscilloscope and we know that because the oscilloscope in this case is measuring UBC and using the formula that the voltage is given by SV multiplied by Y the value of SV is given by 1 and the value of Y is given by plus 3 because it's displaced upward so UBC is given by 3 volts then UBC is given by 3 volts and always the trick is to write the applied voltage on the electric circuit itself so UBC is equal to 3 volts now in the same part they are telling me to deduce UAB deduce means that we need to use the part just previously before Previously we have determined UBC and we are interested in determining UAB. Now UAB can be determined using the law of addition of voltages. So apply law of addition of voltages Always on the left we write the voltage that we are interested in determining in this case which is UAB and from A we can go directly to C and from C back to B because now in this case we know the voltage UBC plus UCB 
the value of UAC is given by 6 now the value of UCB here we have UBC is equal to 3 so UCB is equal to minus 3 and plugging this on the calculator then UAB is equal to 3 volts because 6 and minus 3 are expressed in volts then UAB is equal to 3 volts so let me label here that UAB is equal to 3 volts Now in the last part of this exercise, part 4, they are telling me an analog voltmeter of Dale D is equal to 100 divisions and scales given by 1, 5, 10 and 15 volts is connected across the terminals P and A. So here we are using this analog voltmeter in order to determine the voltage UPA with the following options for the scales, okay? Then in 4.1 they are telling me from the above scales specify the most convenient and by specify it means that we need to stay to the justification let's start by writing the definition or uh, what is meant by the most convenient scale uh, the most convenient scale is the one having a scale slightly greater than the one to be measured so we are measuring the voltage UPA between P and A which is given by 8 so if you consider 8 volt the voltage to be measured the, the two options that are greater than 8 given by 10 and 15 but referring to the definition of the most convenient scale is the one that's slightly greater so the closest one to 8 volts is given by 10 volts so in this case 10 volts is the most convenient scale now in 4.2 they are telling me calculate the deviation of the needle so D and the scale and the voltage to be measured which is given by 8 are related via the following formula that U is equal to S multiplied by D divided by capital D knowing that we are interested in determining the deviation of the needle which is D dragging capital D to the other side it will be multiplied by U dragging S to the other side it will be divided by U now why, why U is 8 volts because notice that we are measuring the voltage across P and A so it's given by 8 multiplied by capital D which is 100 divided by the scale that we have chosen which is 10 and plugging this fraction on the calculator then the deviation of the needle is given by 80 since everything is expressed in the SI then small d will be in the SI which is divisions then the deviation of the needle is given by d is equal to 80 divisions so that's it for me in this video guys, in the next part we'll complete solving exercises on this chapter.